Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very interesting equation. Why is this equation very interesting? Because it involves z cubed and absolute value of z squared. And I'm pretty sure you are guessing at this point what the solutions are going to be like to see if you can find all the solutions to this equation. And guess how many solutions we're going to have. Alright, so we have z cubed plus the absolute value of z squared equals 2, and we're going to be solving for the red z, right? How do we solve for it? Well, if you take a look at this equation, this kind of looks cubic, so it should probably have three solutions, right? Is it fair to assume? One thing to keep in mind, though, absolute value of z squared is real, but z may not be real, or is z real as well? Because z cubed plus absolute value of z squared is equal to a real number. That doesn't mean z is real. It just means that 2 minus z cubed is real. Does that give you an idea? Hopefully it does. Let's proceed. I'm going to go ahead and replace z with a plus bi. Of course, what else could I replace it with, right? So, now, if I do that, I'm going to have to evaluate z cubed from here. Let's go ahead and cube this guy. And to cube it, you have so many different ways. You can kind of do uh, the binomial theorem, you know, like this. And then 3abi squared plus bi cubed. And then if you expand it, like simplify it, a cubed plus 3a squared bi. Now b, b squared i squared is just going to be negative b squared. So it's going to be negative 3ab squared. And i cubed is negative i. So we can kind of write as minus b cubed i. This gives us two things, real part and imaginary part. The real part is a cubed minus 3ab squared, and the imaginary part is 3a squared b minus b cubed. It's kind of like the binomial theorem, but things are a little switched. They're a little distorted, okay, by the complex world. Now, this is z cubed, and I want to add the absolute value of z squared to this. What is absolute value of z squared? It's a squared plus b squared, right? That easy. It's the modulus squared, right? Awesome. Now, we want this sum to be 2. So we're going to add them up and set it equal to 2. Let's do it. How do we add two complex numbers? We are supposed to add the real parts first, right? So that gives us a cubed minus 3ab squared plus a squared plus b squared. And then we add the imaginary parts, but the second number is real. It has no imaginary parts, so it's 0. We're just going to add it to 0, so it's going to be the same thing. Make sense? So this sum is equal to 2. Awesome. This is real, right? I mean, 2 is real. Come on, isn't it? So the left-hand side needs to be real, which means the imaginary part needs to be 0. This is a huge improvement because the real part is 2, but you don't want to start with this equation. This equation is a lot easier. You see that? Let's go ahead and start with that. 3a squared b minus b cubed equals 0, right? Take out a b, 3a squared minus b squared is 0. From here, we get a bunch of options like b equals 0 or b squared equals 3a squared. Cool. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at each one. So first, we're going to look at b equals 0. If b is equal to 0, obviously, we also have to consider the second equation. So let me go ahead and copy that here for easy reference. So I don't have to go back and forth like crazy. And now if b is 0, we know that this is equal to 2, right? Yeah. So now, replace b with 0 everywhere, you're going to get a very simple equation, such as this one. Yay. And from here, you're going to realize, realize, realize. Okay. A is real. Remember that? Don't forget that. So A can be 1. Other solutions are complex. Don't worry about them because we don't care, right? And how do I know that? You can test it out. You'll see. The other solutions are not actually I didn't test it but I have a good feeling that it's not gonna work let's test it out real quick so I can kind of write it like this and then a minus 1 is a common factor just doing it real quick and this is 0 and a squared plus 2a plus yep yeah, this is not real so don't worry about it the only real solution is a equals 1 with b equals 0 which means 1 plus 0 i is a solution which means 1 is a solution. And you probably knew that. Look, if you replace z with 1, its absolute value is also going to be 1, and 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. Or you could assume that, hey, suppose z is real, then z cubed plus z squared is 2, 
and then you're gonna get one okay anyways no matter how you do it you're gonna get one at the end let's go ahead and look at the other case because that's more interesting we have b squared equals 3a squared along with the other one let's go ahead and make another copy of that equation here because we're going to use it a cubed minus 3ab squared plus a squared plus b squared equals 2 along with b squared equals 3a squared it's the second case okay if b squared is 3a squared we can go ahead and replace all the b squared values with that and that's nice because we don't have a b it's really cool 3a times 3a squared plus a squared plus 3a squared equals 2. Now this is going to give us a cubed minus 9a cubed plus 4a squared equals 2. And that's going to give us negative 8a cubed plus 4a squared equals 2. Put everything on the right hand side. 8a cubed minus 4a squared plus 2 equals 0. And then from here you could probably do something. Now we could go ahead and divide everything by 2, but I want to do the following. I want to write this as 2a quantity cubed minus 2a quantity squared plus 2 equals 0, and then call 2a something. How about c? Then I'm going to be getting c cubed minus c squared plus 2 is equal to 0. And do you think we can find a solution to this equation? I don't think 1 or negative 1 is going to be a solution, but I could be wrong. 1 minus 1 is not going to work. Uh, negative 1 minus 1 plus 2 is going to work yes awesome negative one is a solution so x equals negative one is a solution which implies 2a equals negative one which implies a equals negative one half awesome now we got the value of a uh, but that's probably the only real solution and i could easily check that let me show you how real quick you could actually write this as cq plus one minus c squared plus one and then kind of factor it with c plus one c squared minus c plus one minus c minus plus one c minus one take the c plus one out and you're going to get c squared minus c minus c minus two c plus two again we get a complex solution for c we don't want that because a is real c also has to be real make sense so c equals negative one is the only value and a equals negative one half is the result as the only value so if a is equal to negative one half obviously i have this right here you don't want to use the other one do you i don't think so b squared equals 3a squared let's use it b squared is 3a squared so b squared is 3 times 1 fourth which is 3 fourths from here we get 2b values 2b or not to be a root 3 over 2 and negative root 3 over 2 awesome this comes from where a equals negative 1 half therefore these make up new solutions, yay. So one of them is gonna be negative one half plus root three over two i. Another one will be negative one half minus root three over two i. Take a look, a is always negative and real and b can be plus minus and those are gonna be give us another solution. Obviously, uh, one is a solution too. So along with one, we have three solutions, right? Let's check it out. That let's see what Wolfram Alpha gives us, kind of like a graph of something. And then, yay, we got the exact same solutions. Good job, Wolfram Alpha. You got it right. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.